Look at how cool my shirt is. I love this shirt so very much. Um, yeah, just wanted to wanted to show that shirt. It's like super cold in my room, so I'm just gonna put this back on. But I just wanted to show how great my shirt was. So hey there, guys. Don't mind me just getting dressed again. Um, I am filming a video today, partly because Fran told me that she loves me and she wants me. She wishes I had more videos, so I'm putting this up for you, Fran. But also because I read a book, you gave me some. So this is my third time filming this video because the first time that I filmed it, this camera, which I usually film on, this is a Fujifilm Finepix S4080, um, does not record all the time and I can't see that because, wow, this is shit lighting and I'm sorry, but like, it does not have like a pop-out screen or anything so I can't tell for how long it's recording. So I'm using my parents' camcorder, which I've used in the past and I kind of like this one better, but we're just gonna, we're gonna work with this, okay? Cool. Maybe this will be better. You you let me know. You. I'm a little tired. I'm going to be honest right now. I'm a little tired. But I wanted to film this video because I just read The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider. And I wanted to love it. I really, really wanted to love it. But I just didn't. And I was really upset about this. Um, some issues I had with this book would be... I'm not going to do anything spoilery. Um, the use of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl trope with Cassidy Thorpe. Um, her character could have been expanded much more, but instead she was just used as, like, an aide moving Ezra Faulkner, who is a douchebag number two reason I couldn't get into it because I really hated the main character. And I'm okay with having a main character who's unlikable. I mean, Catcher in the Rye is one of my other favorite books. It's not, like, my top favorite book, but I still love it. Um... Which also brings me to number three. My favorite book of all time is The Great Gatsby. And this is like a loose adaptation, modern retelling type thing of that. Which I could just not get behind. Gatsby is one of my all time favorite books. So I'm going to take it very like seriously and judge it harshly and be very critical and analytical and all those words. And I could not get behind this. Okay, he thinks that his dog is like the reincarnated version of Jay Gatsby. No, that's not possible because Jay Gatsby, one, is a fictional character, and two, you have a dog. You are controlling what that dog thinks by saying, oh yeah, my dog is totally thinking this old sport. Just because someone says old sport, I can't tell what your dog is thinking. This is not up. You do not have those dog collars that say what the dog is thinking and like puts them out into a human voice in English. No, no. So you are putting these in his head and like if, okay, so if Gatsby is the dog, then that makes Ezra our Nick, who, yeah, he does, he does kind of a good job for being a Nick because Nicks are like Nick Haraway and Ezra are both very like on the sidelines, which Nick is not on the side, or not Nick rather, um, Ezra is not on the sidelines because even after his he's fallen from his claim to fame of being popular because his knee was shattered in a car accident, which really, okay, it was very unrealistic because you wouldn't lose all your friends just because you got into a car accident and you couldn't play a sport again. Like, if you're friends with them, you're friends with them for other reasons and that's not just because you play tennis and are good at it. No. So it was very unrealistic that he just totally, like, secluded himself from what his former friends were doing and Charlotte I guess is supposed to be a daisy and that would make Evan a Tom um but they Robin kind of made Charlotte even more shallow um than Daisy is in the book which is kind of hard to do because I mean, even even with Daisy, I feel some remorse a little bit and can like her a bit. I absolutely hated Charlotte, and there was no, like, reason, like, Ezra the whole book was just kind of like, eh, I'm not into her, but I'll date her. Eh, I'm not into her, but I'll kiss her. Eh, I'm not into her, so I don't want to get back together. No, like, there's a reason why Gatsby wants to be with Daisy, and it's because of money. Because she's rich and he's not, and she has what he's always wanted which is wealth and power, and that just was not conveyed well in the book, and I guess that would make Cassidy our 
Jordan. I have no idea who Toby would be. I didn't really think this through. This was just kind of very loose, kind of just all coming together in my mind right now. But I just felt like this was trying way too hard and I could not find myself enjoying it. I found myself being really upset with it and just <sighs> frustrated and flustered and feeling like I don't know the right words to say. And I thought, oh, the first paragraph of this book is absolutely stunning. And I totally thought I would fall in love with her writing style, which then I found myself losing and found myself thinking that she was trying to imitate other authors instead of just being who she was. Um, the first paragraph of the book goes like, Sometimes I think that everyone has a tragedy waiting for them. That the people buying milk in their pajamas or picking their nose at stoplights could be only moments away from disaster. That everyone's life, no matter how unremarkable, has a moment when it will become extraordinary. A single encounter after which everything that really matters will happen. That's beautiful. I absolutely loved that and was like so pumped reading it. I was like, yeah, I'm totally gonna love this. Alright, let's keep going. And I thought the accident with Toby was horrifying, but also hysterical. Um, but then it just kind of, that's, that's the top of the roller coaster and then you're just going down. And I found it really hard to enjoy it, knowing that just Cassidy was just used to make Ezra realize that, hey, your life isn't over just because you're stupid and got in, <laughs> and think that it is. Like, there's more to life than just playing tennis, you dumbass. That may have been a little harsh, I'm sorry. Um, I just really didn't like this book. Um, just, just, I found the book also to be very predictable. I kind of called the twists, like what was with Cassidy and why she had moved and just Cooper, just that. I knew that was going to happen and was really hoping it wouldn't. Um, I just, I felt like going into this book it had so much potential especially with the car crash um and how they watch it in their I think it's like AP lit class or something their literature class and you you it's hard for him to watch because he thinks of his own car accident where he shattered and just I was very frustrated while reading this and I was very upset because I really wanted to love this book I just was so upset that it wasn't what I had hoped it would be and I don't know if I'll read anything else by Robin Schneider in the future. I had found about this book um, because of her YouTube channel. I follow both of them. Whispering in Stars was the one I found first and that I found Robin is really funny. And she's a really great video maker. She hasn't really made anything recently that I've seen. But um, I thought it was great and I'm just upset that this book wasn't what I had hoped. I gave this two out of five stars and I don't think I would reread it to see if it changes. Um, if you're interested in reading this, I read this mostly with Answerly. Um, well that's not really true because I read it in a day. I had been sick with a stomach bug and I was reading this and was watching Haley G. Hoover's videos with each after reading the corresponding chapters and then they still have one week left to read the last three and it was, um, it just, it wasn't my cup of tea. And I was really hoping that this would be a contemporary that would put me like in a really good mood and I would really love it and be like, okay, I definitely have to buy this. But I, I didn't feel that way. And, um, I'm sorry if you disagree. Um, I know out there that this is someone's favorite book. I like to think that every book I read is someone's favorite book. And so that even if I don't like it, I know that someone else does and they love it dearly and hold it to their hearts. But no, this was not a good book for me. And I did not fall madly, deeply, hopelessly in love with Ezra Faulkner, Sarah Milnowski. I'm sorry I said your last name wrong. Um, but no, I didn't because he's a douche and doesn't care about anyone but himself and is so vapid. And just, sadly, I was not a fan of this and I really want it to be. But that was my review. Um... I hope it was good. It was a little rambly and I'm sorry, but I was just kind of saying what I felt. But yeah. So I hope you're all having a great day and enjoying what you're reading. And if you're not, then just stop because what's the point unless it's for school? Read it for school. Um, 
and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. I'm actually going to film two more reviews, I think, right now. So I'll go do that, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!